Hey everybody, welcome back to December 14th. Tell me, Victor, tell me honestly, are you a human being or a robot? Huh? Right? Or are you sure? Have you checked? Because it seems to me you have a set of programmed commands instead of brains in your head. Ever consider showing a little bit of flexibility? Just a little bit, huh? Ever consider that selling butter and selling gasoline isn't the same thing? I... Well, listen... Listen to me, Victor. Listen to me a second before your tiny electrical brains run out of batteries. When you sell him butter, you sell him a delicious breakfast. A person can live without a delicious breakfast. Yes, uh -oh. most people in this fucking town haven't even heard of a delicious breakfast. Jackie's on a when mission. When you sell him butter, he's in a position to bargain. Because if he doesn't have butter, he'll smear his toast with clay. And by God, I swear he will eat it with no less pleasure. But when you sell him gasoline, Victor, when you sell him gasoline, you sell him his business. You sell him the entire meaning of his existence. Because, Victor, if he doesn't have gasoline, he'll have to shut down his gas station. And if he closes his gas station, he won't have butter or toast on the table. <laughs> and in fact, he won't even have a fucking table. Because his creditors will take away his whole fucking house. And a man needs a fucking house so that he can have a place to put his fucking table. You got the logic, right? Now see if you can digest it with your fucking electrodes or whatever you usually think with and call me back when you come to an agreement on the price. Jesus. Ah, you're already here. I'm sorry, Jack. It's a busy time of year. I gotta sit by the phone all day. I can call you Jack, right? Why am I asking? I'm already calling you Jack. <laughs> Let's sit down. We could go to the bar, by the way. I'm waiting for a call, but I could. It's fine here. You sure? Well, as you like. That's what I love about sharp wood. Even if I forget to put the beer in the refrigerator, <laughs> still it'll cold. still be cold. Yep. Here, you can help yourself. Hmm, doesn't look like beer, does it? Well, what is it? The infamous smelly soup? You should try it. Go on. Try it, try it. Don't be squeamish. Half of Sharpwood eats that soup every day. <laughs> no one's dead yet. <laughs> Not from the soup, anyway. Now I see. Hmm? Now I see why you'd say that anyone who lives on this soup would try to get out of here. Well, yes, but... Uh... But most of them stay. What do you think keeps them here? Family? Friends? Friends? But there's nothing easier than making friends. When did you arrive in Sharpwood? About ten weeks ago? Or was it eight? And look, you're already surrounded by friends. No, no, it's not friends. It's the enemies. Ask anyone in the city. Ask a poor man. Ask a rich man. Of course, if you can find a rich man. They all have them. Every one of them has a neighbor they can't stand. Well, how can you leave Sharpwood and allow your enemy to go on without you? So he could plant a cherry tree in your backyard? So he, not you, could buy drugs on discount? So he could grab a nice plot of land? We get it, Henderson. No, no, no one can allow this. The enemy must be exhausted if it takes you your whole life. With the enemy, you need to fight to the last. Once you have an enemy, you're doomed. You can't think straight. Old Sheriff Wells was doomed. He couldn't stand drug dealers. I myself don't care for him, but Wells didn't count them as people at all. Despised them more than murderers and rapists. And as soon as those fucking neckties appeared in the city, he knew right away that they were his enemies. Enemies which he must overcome, you see? And even if by some miracle he succeeded, what next? What other enemies would he have invented? And the performance we arranged for him that night? He had no reason to believe that there were ties hiding in that house. But one phone call, from this phone here, by the way, and he rushes off into the night to God knows where. You know what happened next. Man. He threw himself into a hail of bullets, got two young cops killed too, though they had absolutely nothing to do with it. Sheriff Wells invented his enemies, and he paid for them dearly. So the policeman had to pay for doing police work. What? Jack, come on. I know we need the police. Of course we need them. 
There was a case here recently, a month before you got here, maybe less. A fellow named Rocco, he was a butcher here. His old mother, Bertha, went missing. And Bertha had either Alzheimer's or old age dementia, or is it the same thing? I, anyway, poor Bertha always forgot everything. Couldn't even recognize Rocco half the time. And then suddenly, she disappeared somewhere. So, what did our Rocco decide? Our Rocco decided that his mother was kidnapped by Eves Menke, another local butcher, his competitor, so to speak. No, just think, a man finds his mother missing, his old sick mother who can't remember her way to the toilet, and the first idea that comes into his head, his competitor kidnapped her. He watched too many movies, I guess. So what did Rocco do? Rocco picked up the hammer, went to Eve's <laughs> Menke's house, cracked open his skull, then Jeez. broke his brother's skull, then broke his father's skull, then went down to their basement shouting, Mom, I've come to save you. And the basement was empty. Of course it's fucking empty. And there he is, standing there. Goes back home, covered in blood, hammer in hand, and his mother is there, sitting in her armchair, quietly knitting. Walked around in the woods all day, then came back home. Doesn't even remember a thing about it. Now Rocco will be in prison for the rest of his life. And what's the but point of your story here, Hendy? If the police, if the cops had combed the forest looking for poor Bertha, nothing would have happened. So of course we need <laughs> the police. Never imagine, Jack, that I think the police is my enemy. I don't invent enemies for myself. I won't repeat the old sheriff's mistakes. Unlike the new sheriff. What, you arranging a special performance for her, too? I could, of course, but what happens after oh, that? Oh, shit. Marino says that after Gail Greenberg's death, there's no first deputy in the department. So if the sheriff suddenly dies, anyone might take her place. Yeah, and we can't because we're off the books. Need anyone. I need you. I'm sorry? You're working in the sheriff's department, unofficially, right? I think it's time to formalize your status. First deputy sheriff. It's a good start, huh? Why would Lily formally appoint me as first deputy? You're not listening to me at all, Jack. Lily invented an enemy for herself and will do anything if it means she can get even with her enemy. Believe me, run the ties out of Sharpwood and you'll get your post. She wouldn't think for a second. I'm not sure she... Uh... Just think, Jack, just think! The ties didn't just flood the city with drugs. Oh, no, that would not be enough. The ties killed her precious Sheriff Wells. Well, that's what she believes anyway. But would they stop at that? Oh, no. The ties killed Gail Greenberg. And was that enough? Not at all. Now the ties had also killed her champion, Captain Carter. As far as I know, Jack, you made sure poor Lily thought as much. <laughs> you can be sure, Jack. Oh, Hatred man. Her enemy has all but blinded our sheriff. Like her predecessor. Like her predecessor's predecessor. Consider this a Sharpwood tradition. Suppose she agrees. Although I do not really believe she will, then I'll still need to deliver and take out these ties. Is that a problem? I thought you were an experienced cop. I don't even know where their headquarters are. But I do. I learned a lot from our distinguished young student, Arthur Sherman. The scholar couldn't be held in isolation without books. He traded all the valuable secrets <laughs> of the insidious neckties for the Viscount de Bragelonne. Can you imagine? Have you heard about the Neptune book? Even if I can. Oh, that must be Victor. Don't worry, Jack. She'll agree. You'll see. She'll agree without hesitation. <laughs> Call me when you made the deal. Just don't leave it too long. Here, little souvenir from Freebird. Hello. Uh-oh. What? what are they saying about us now? So Mayor Boyd is Freeberg's public enemy number one. Oh, Mayor's saying Boyd is. And he will not escape. <sighs> okay. Hey, Lighty. All right, welcome back. Drank too much. Drank too much. Drank too much. Yeah, okay. So these guys with the double drinks... I think they're permanent alcoholics. Um, yeah, everybody can go to the funeral if they want. That's fine. We're going to try and get Marshall sorted out here in the drunk bin. Let's auto assign. <laughs> Look at this outfit now. It's just getting out of control. It's getting out of control. I like it, though. Uh, everybody's got batons. All right. 
So this investigation, we're going to, we're going to send somebody to get the last clue. We'll send Percy, get the last clue. Uh, here, gray haired man or long haired man. Oh, right. No, hold on. Uh, we figured out traces of urine found in the victim's face and clothes, right? So we want to investigate the long haired guy. So we see the spit here. Uh, we're going to go on the long-haired guy. Kurosawa. Look for the long-haired guy. And... You know what? I'm going to send you... You go look for the long-haired guy. Because we need a whole bunch. Hold on. Long-haired. Yep. Yeah. And then here, you're looking for clues, but then we have everything, we have all the pictures that we would need. We're basically just confirming that. Long hair. We're not going to get four, but we're pretty sure it's him. And then here, someone stole Bill Buckler's prized hen from his chicken coop. We need a clue. And we need frames. Let's finish the clues there. All right. Now, first things first. Early morning rehab. Let's go. Hopefully this works. Mr. Nash, we're back from our honeymoon. Before I get stuck in the kitchen again, I want to show off my photographs. I travel all across Europe. I've never seen such a beauty my whole life. How did you get by without me? You didn't starve, I hope. No, I went broke, though. Okay, alcoholism treatment. Passenger. Driver. Let's go. 535 in progress. Sorry to lose you there, Rockman, buddy. That was such a bummer. It must be Sunday. Code I. Uh, I was going to be under Lily's command. Oh, a new guy. But now she says she's finally fed up with me. So now it looks like I'll be working with you. Why do you think she hated me so much? Well, yeah, one time I was throwing darts in the dining hall. I ate a candle and started a small fire. But I put it out myself. All right, you'll fit in here. 2400. A guard is forcing prisoners to play Russian roulette at the correctional facility. Uh, let's do something like this, maybe. Gives us a lot more flexibility in how we handle the scenario. Okay. The other thing we want to look for is potentially buying. Hmm. No stun grenades. Let's buy a couple of these. And I'm going to buy an extra taser. We need the paprika. And we need ground coffee and heroin, we, which we have. So the only thing we need is coffee. And then we can finally clear this thing off. 539, in progress. Uh, the body of an elderly Alan Cross has disappeared from the morgue. His funeral's been canceled. The family is horrified. Okay, we'll check that out later. A frightened elderly man called in panic. My God, there's a real massacre going on at the station. The cops haven't let up for several minutes. Uh, I feel like this is probably not real. Frightened, elderly. Normally, these are false alarms. I can't send anyways, so let's hope that it is. Nash, I can still smell a horrible vinegar, maybe a bourbon. Okay, so that didn't work. Come on, false alarm, baby. Nice, 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 nice. False alarm. 558 false alarm. in progress. Mr. Nash, it went well. Glad my colleague had a decent funeral. Thanks for letting me go. You're welcome, dude. 2870. Uh, Air Avramov claims that upon up on her second floor, something powerful exploded, sending gas everywhere. This happened when she went out to, on the porch for the morning newspaper. Mrs. Avramov is afraid that some robbers climbed up to her roof and used explosive to get in? What the frick? Uh... Okay, so here's, here's what I'm going to do. First of all, we're going to try and cure this guy again. 
And we'll send uh, the driver, the passenger, like so. Um, Jeez, look at that. Crazy. These requirements are getting out of control. All right, the defendant, Allison Spivy, was found guilty. Good job, guys. Look at that. Bonuses everywhere. That's cool. Let's max out your strength. Or, sorry, intelligence. We'll go negotiation here. Uh, speed. Let's do uh, Max Kurosawa Intelligence. Okay. Reckless endangerment. There are two prisoners in the yard. One of them is holding a revolver. And he's ready to spin the drum. Behind him, a drunken guard with a rifle is directing the action. Come on, Greg. Spin the drum. If you survive, you can walk right out of the prison gates as a free man. And if not, you'll be giving a free ticket to your friend. You ready? Let's order them to throw down the revolver. Prisoner wanted to obey the cop, but the guard jabbed him with his rifle and barked, Spin the drum, or I'll shoot you in the head myself. We don't have the stun grenades. Uh... So I guess we take him out. With the sniper. 535, complete. Civilians unharmed, but the offender's dead. Alright. Hey, there's tobacco, too. So, hold on. Uh... Oh, no, we didn't need tobacco. It's coffee. My bad. My bad. My bad. Uh, maybe a bourbon. Frick. Third time's a charm, maybe? 519 in progress. What's at the high school? Very much in love with Laura. She's just the funniest person in the world, and I want to do something special when I propose. Won't be easy to surprise her, but I thought this through. Laura works with children who can do incredible things every day. Can you lend me a uniform and another cop to do the driving, along with a stun grenade? We'll wait until Laura is alone in her office, then we'll throw the grenade for the big wow effect, then burst in, bam, bam, bam. You're all accused of stealing my heart. This is a bad idea. I could offer you all I have left, a brand new VCR and beer. Probably not going to be doing that, no. 2240, noise complaint. For the past half hour, Mrs. Stixon has been hearing the sound of heavy blows through the window of her neighbor's house. She fears that someone's being beaten. Maybe. We'll have to wait for a whole bunch of people. No explosion. Window slamming and breaking. Frick! Meanwhile, the noise complaint's probably legit. But we don't have the, uh, the resources. All right, I can send someone here now. Nice. Okay, so these old people, they're really, like, not reliable at all, are they? This is the flashbang thing. 534 in progress. Hopefully we get some flashbangs we can buy at the end of the day. That would be dope. Okay, a woman reports their son's friend is going to go home because he gets badly... Or was afraid to go home because he gets badly beaten there. Uh, let's send out Hodges. 680. Do something like that. And then we're going to try this again. in progress. The woman heard a l car roaring and then a loud blow. A couple seconds later, someone shouted. That could work. Are we sent Hodges? Ah, uh, not quite. We'll send her. We'll send our sniper because we're getting close to the end of the day. Might as well. Oh, are you serious? 518 in progress. 
The funeral of the crime boss, Giannis Kokinos, ended in another death. According to the funeral home owner, the newly deceased is named Tony. It seems that this young man, instead of saying a few polite words about the deceased, instead condemned the traditional ritual of the family putting an offering in the coffin. The guy was quickly silenced. An elderly man shouted that Giannis was rolling in his coffin, snatched a gun, and shot Tony. Mayhem ensued, during which time it became clear that the valuable offering had disappeared from the coffin. And now the funeral guests were dispersed through the office in a mad search for it? We don't have any- we can send one guy. Homeless woman trying to keep warm, climbed into the cab of a truck. Cab was just as cold as the street outside, so she took a gasoline can, doused the seats with fuel and set them on fire. Well... We'll have to see if these guys can get back in time. No, he's- he's not getting cured. False alarm on the beating. Okay, we have some people available. 519 in progress. This might be possible. We might be able to try this. Hodges, Aranovich. Although he's got no items. He can shoot. But that's not really great. Marshall. Clayton. Roddy with the taser. Pastrami, but again, I mean, these guys can arrest people. He's too tired, too tired, too tired. We could send them in to try and arrest people, maybe. Not dressed for that? Combat conditions can get too messy? Oh, you don't go on combat missions? Are you serious? Okay, this is going to be interesting. All right. Percy found new clues. So the last thing here, pathologist. I work in the evenings. I've recently been seeing this one homeless guy who looks like a drug addict. He limps around with a cart full of junk and looks into the windows while I'm working. First, I thought he was looking out of curiosity or to have a laugh. We've got bodies laying out there. Uh, but now I think he was looking for something valuable. He always needs money for his next fix. But I don't know why he dragged all the corpses around and took a crap in the corner. Do you think it's because he ate all those drugs? Oh. So that's confirming the crap. This homeless person says the screeching tires saw a hearse pull away. It's strange because they normally do this from 9 to 12. There are fresh tire tracks. And the morgue's door, but that's fine. We know that they probably came in through the window. But like why would the patholo like why would the funeral home director break the window to do it? Unless he's framing him. Unless he's like, oh, this is what he would do. Do you think it's because he ate all those drugs? I feel like we're gonna convict the wrong dude here. But we'll see. Okay. Long-haired man, we're still waiting. We'll go through these in a bit. See, but here's the urination. So this is- it is definitely the long-haired guy. Like, 100%. So we just need to do a little bit more on that. We have all the clues here. Now we need frames. Hit and run. So many false alarms. Destruction of property, nothing. Ernest Lighty interrogated some of the witnesses, and we have a preliminary report for the mystery of the missing corpse. Okay. Waitress or troublemaker? Okay, we'll get into those in a bit. Alright. Um, I know where Tony hid something valuable. I don't really care about finding packages. Cocaine is too valuable, I think. I'll tell you where he hid the ingot. Oh, so you tr you're basically trading cocaine for gold. The Grave Digger. Um, sorry. I was hoping to go into the funeral home for my pay when I ran to a guy with a gun. I have a sort of gentleman's agreement with the owner of this place. He gives me money, and I always put the deceased to the de right depth, so no wild beasts give them. 
gig them up. So he's happy, and all the customers are happy, and everything's good, and I'm happy too. I had a newborn son recently, so the extra money helps out. But there's some things you can't buy with money. A little piss and shit doesn't bother me too much. But my wife has to wrap the kids in rags because we can't get any fucking diapers around here. She's mad how bad it stinks. And in the end, the whole thing drives me crazy too. This has been going on for almost two months. And I already want to lie down in one of my graves and cover myself with dirt. So you can get me some diapers and I might survive long enough to tell you what's happening at the f home. Yeah, that's fine. The owner of Funeral Home uh, owed me money for two jobs I did last week. The owner said he'd bring me the money along with another undergrounder. That's what he calls the corpses. Anyway, I got tired of waiting and decided to visit him myself. I was about to go in through the front door, as always, when I saw the through the glass of some gloomy guy carrying a gun. Well, I knew it was better to leave these kind of guys alone and let them do their thing. Their type had come by a few times before, so I went to the garden where I could wait until they were finished in there. I walked around the building, almost to the back door, when he came across another guy with a gun. Maybe he was patrolling. Anyway, he told me to get lost. I went back to the garden, and along the way I saw another, a couple other guys with guns. Who were they burying? They needed that kind of protection. So... Maybe a guy patrolling here, is what he's saying? And, but there's definitely people at the front door. So, yeah. Okay, so we want to go around this side, it looks like. But I'm not sure what all these signs actually mean. But sounds like these guards, this is like patrol routes of certain guards. So this guy goes around the tree. This dude goes in and up like this. This guy's in like so, and then back and forth. So this is definitely the way we want to go in. Um, hygiene products. When I'm retiring, is that what you're thinking? Yes, I still work every day. People die on weekends, you know. And it's a rare day in Sharpwood when only one person dies. So there's always plenty of work to do. People never stop dropping dead. But the owner is as tight-fisted as they come. Wouldn't even hire a cleaning lady. You won't believe the mud those folks drag in. But enough about the cleaning lady. That's nothing. We don't even have soap in the toilet. Can you believe it? I'll tell you one thing, though. I'm tired of having to bring in my own soap from the house. So if you bring me a few packs of soap, I'll tell you all about those thugs who made such a fuss at the funeral parlor. Um, seems like someone stole something right out of the coffin. In the end, instead of remembering the deceased, they run through the office, looking inside every box, searching for something one of them stole. They didn't find anything. Now they're still wandering in the office like they're lost. So she's saying, this is giving us like a number. Two guys in here, maybe. Six to seven in these rooms. One, two, three, patrolling, two stationary, and one here. Interesting. Okay, so this is helpful. We're definitely wanting to go in through this side, I believe. We are understaffed, but hopefully we can make it work. Okay, now, baton guy, we're going to give you this. Uh, we want burglar perks. Maybe traps? If we have to start fighting, the accuracy is nice. Can move an additional one or more cells is very cool. And with max negotiation, forced surrender could also be a decent option. Let's do something like that. More moves. Longer stun. Burglar and interrogation. I don't know if we need the grasshopper. I didn't recall if... I didn't see if there was like a locked... Um, like if there was a gate there. I think it looked like they were open because they had a guy patrolling, but... We'll see. Awareness. Um, maybe somebody with traps... And movement. We have interrogation. We have awareness. Okay. Let's go burglar. Force surrender on the max negotiation. Um, this is just our arrest guy, right? So force surrender, I guess, is pretty good because we don't have any weapons.
Um... We can maybe do... Freeze Buddy? And then if we have to shoot, the first shot will be silent. So if we can get a good shot off, I guess we could take it. Uh, we could do the same with him. Burglar. Uh, Force Surrender is not that great. May as well grab Awareness then. And... I guess we'll do, like, another trap thing. Just so we have multiple. But we're going to be sending everyone through the same area, right? So maybe that's kind of a waste. Clayton has it. Let's maybe grab Sentry. So we can see farther. Alright, here we go. So we, need, we know there's a dude rotating around that side. So it looks like the only way in there is going under this light. Concerns me a little bit. Okay, what's up with you? This is Marshall. Okay, so it is the drunk thing too, not, not just fatigue. Shit, that's gonna make you so useless. Pepper spray, baton, and movement. Oh, that's the worst. Roger. All right. So I'm calling it that the drunk thing 100% impacts the movement. But the fatigue probably dictates how far we can go. Do I have to be worried about this light? This is the only way through, it looks like. I wonder if Clayton can jump this? Doesn't look like it. Roger. Start bringing these guys in. And even though Marshall has that baton, he's completely useless. He's completely useless. So he'll probably just stay in the back. Uh, Pastrami. First shot silent. I want to put my... I have two batons now that are useful, right? Or do I just have one? Hodges. Hodges and Clayton. Are useful. I'm gonna put these guys next to each other up front. Okay. Five eighty. There's our guy. I'm gonna try and tuck in here. We have this one. Seeing that he was faced that way. Now that guy patrols in and out, I think. Based on the diagram that we saw. Bring these guys in. We have this one. So, the idea here is we're going to go baton strike one, and then arrest. We'll have the follow-up. It should work out okay. 
Clayton, yep, good. Bonk. We'll set you there to make the arrest next turn. And then we'll start setting up on this guy. Okay. That intel that we get, that's pretty cool, man. I'll say, like, that's really a neat way of, of doing things. I felt like sometimes it, it hasn't been valuable, but this has probably been the most valuable one because it actually showed, like, patrol routes and stuff, but... Some of them we just didn't have the, um, the trade equipment that they were looking for, so... Get on the ground. Uh, we could maybe do an interrogation here. I can't remember who has that. Uh, Marshall has it. That's it. That's gonna be Marshall's job. Just interrogate stuff. It's going to take him a long time to get there, too. Okay, we're just going to be cool here. This guy, I think, was indicated as coming into here as well. So, I mean, these guys are seeing in here. Maybe we just take this opportunity and, and take them out. Roger. Roger. We'll come up here and make the arrest. Get on the ground. Then we can interrogate this guy in a couple of turns as well. So again, Hodges and Clayton doing the knockdowns. Clayton, Hodges, okay good, they're in front. No doors or windows. Let's put Hodges up. Oh shit, is he gonna see us? No. This is like a little maze back here. That's cool. Okay, so let's wait. See if this guy's a mover or not. He is. Now, let's do this. We'll do the interrogation first. So we'll see if we have any other people potentially behind him. Wow. Okay, so there's nobody behind him. This is the last guy outside. We have this dude who may or may not be patrolling, but that's a decent takedown. My worry is that we have this guy here. And can we slide in along this wall and then take him out? I hope so. I hope so. Clayton and Hodges are crushing right now. As they should, let's be honest. High expectations for those boys. Okay. 
Clayton. Let's take this full cover. We have oh shit, he is moving. Take this cover here. Roger. Now remember that uh, the other girl, I guess, which is kind of a clue in and of itself. We could have traded her something for the gold, I think. And so there's probably a package in here that's worth finding. If we can make that happen, that'd be great. What'd be really helpful to see is if this person changes their perspective at all. Or if they're just guarding that door. I'm hoping that we can sneak around here and not be caught. That's what I'm hoping. I'm just going to move this guy back a tad. And we'll bring up uh, Clayton. That's fine. Okay, so let's interrogate here. Oh, he does move. Okay, nice. That's helpful. Now these guys are facing this this ending there. Man, do we try to get in here? I think I'm going to go in now. So we've lost sight of him. Come to the door. Where the frick is that guy? Oh, did he come out this way too? Interesting. I'm fine with this. The, the idea of having this guy just do the interrogations uh, seems to be okay. Now we know that this guy, obviously patrol, he was here, he goes back here, he's out here now. So he probably comes back in, then he comes up. And then we'll scout the hallway and hopefully figure out a time when these guys are hidden, but... That one might actually be tougher. I don't know what kind of cover we have in there, if any, so... We'll see. Nothing. Let's be patient. I'm gonna wait till he shows. There we go. And then he's going to walk up here, because he was facing here before. There we go. We got him figured out. Roger. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. I don't know why that's what clicks into my head every time we hear that sound. Every single time. Oh, so this guy's cruising in and out of there too. I'm 
make the arrest. On the ground. Okay, so these guys are up and down the hall. I can keep him here. This is a free interrogation at some point. And the rest, well, let's hope this guy doesn't walk in. Okay, nice. So, this is the position we probably want to make our attack from. Yeah, nice, because he can actually reach here. Then we'd have to have another guy that stuns here. And then we would have to set up over here quickly. So that's going to be a challenge. Um, that's going to be a challenge. Now, we could probably hide someone here, but if this guy walks out, then it's going to be an issue. However, we can maybe set someone here as well on their return trip. So this might take a second to set up, but I think it'll be worth it. I'm also wondering if we need to have, um, if we bring Marshall in, in a position like this, where we know he's going to walk to. He only has the one action, but that could be an action that he uses, you know? Where he stuns him or whatever. You could stun him on one turn, arrest him on the next, and we could have somebody set up over here. But we really need to get a visual here. That's the problem. Or we could kind of approach these guys as they're going through here. Just stay a couple of feet behind them. Could be an option. Because they walk all the way to that end, right? We've seen them do that. Maybe that's the play. Oh, I'm really concerned about this. You know what? Here, here's what we'll do. We'll put the non-baton cop, Pastrami, over here. We have visual. Okay. So we can get a sense of what they're route is like. And then... Something like this. If these guys come out, Pastrami... Hold on. Pastrami has Silent Shooter, and Aranovich also has Silent Shooter. So if something bad does happen, they'll be really close, and they'll be able to kill them. So, yeah. I'm getting a bit worried about leaving him so far behind. But uh, we can always give a few turns for him to catch up. I wonder if that's too far away. So we have one patrolling here as well. I don't know what this guy's route is, but he definitely popped out there at one point. Okay, so, uh, Clayton, what does he have? He has a shocker, that doesn't really help me. Uh... We have Pepper Spray. Oh, yeah, but Marshall. We have Pepper Spray and Hodges, too, actually. Because we could... What we could do is uh, knock this guy out and then Pepper Spray him from up close, like in this position, to get the guy in the back. I think that works. We, oh, frick. We have this door, too, I just realized. Damn it. This could be... This could be bad.
So as long as you don't go right to their tile, you can you can get super close to these dudes. What's this? Oh, the force surrender. Decent, decent chances, but I think we just play it safe. Okay, I'm gonna actually interrogate here to see if there's anyone in that next room. I can't remember. There is, and he's right by the freaking door. This could be bad. This could be bad. I hope it's not, but it might be. I wonder which is the dude that comes out here. Nice thing is, is that we get to move back with Clayton. So that if this guy does walk out, we can get in range for a baton knock. But I don't know if he's going to scout these guys or if he doesn't see them because they're behind cover. If he walks out here. I mean, I could also, I could also just start moving these guys. Maybe that's the safer play. <laughs> this is tense. This is tense, man. Oh, there's a package. Beautiful. Beautiful. So now we're waiting for this guy to walk out, which we know he's done. We'll start moving you as far as we can. There he is. Now we can go in here as well and knock him down. Roger. Five eighty. I wonder if this guy's gonna see us. Fuck. We might have screwed this up. I don't know if this guy's gonna see us or not. I might try. It's 50%. That is not good. Get on the ground. Oh, I'm a bit concerned here, boys. A little bit concerned about this. Unless he goes up, which is possible. I don't know his exact pattern. Okay. Oh, here's another interrogation, right? If we want it. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Get on the ground. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to have you come back and grab this box. And we'll transfer it over to him at some point. Wait till he cruises around. Then we can knock him out. Guys, we're doing well. We're doing really great. 
That intel was so cool. The outside part might be di might be a bit dicey, but hey, we'll see. Wait, why can't we pick this up? Wounded allies and boxes of loot can be le Why can't we pick this up? That's weird, isn't it? It's because it's like glitched under this table or something? That's so weird. All right, well, that's great. <laughs> Is he not uh, making his way over here? Is he not playing nice? It's tempting to see if we can sneak by this way. Maybe we try that when he's in this position and then we knock him out. If that's how he's gonna be. Roger. If he's just going up and down like this, seems to be his play. Wait, do we have anybody back here? I better double check. Roger. One, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. And Clayton has one, two, three, four, five, six. So the same, or sorry, uh, Aranovich. Not a big deal. It's like one or two extra turns. We've come this far. I like okay, yeah, so there is somebody there. Hmm. Does he move? That's the question. This guy just walks back and forth. I don't know what his reaction is like. We have visual. I don't know which way he turns or if he'll see us here. Like, I have no way of knowing. There's probably so much more leeway than what I'm like giving them credit for, but you know. Maybe there isn't. Okay, nice. Yeah, pretty easy. It seems to be just that tile, like, right next to them. Just make sure we got the right guy. I don't have the right guy! Oh, <laughs> shit! I do not have the right guy for this. Whoops. Okay. That's my bad. I'm gonna wait till he's in this position, then go, because I don't know if if he sees us in his view cone or whatever when he turns around, you know? Like this. I don't know if he would spot somebody sitting there or not. Okay, Clayton. And then I'm also going to use Hodges here. Put these guys behind the doors. We'll start moving you. All right.
surprise. Beautiful. Uh, do we have no cover there? What about here to give us view of the outside? We have visual. There's one. Maybe I should do another one here. We have oh, visual. we got one right there. Okay. We have this window we can open. I don't know if he can see through this, like... This... This windowy type... Thing? I got no cover there, so I kind of have to imagine that... He could. Uh, we could stay here for an interrogation. Now, who's got the burglary thing? So Hodges does, Marshall does, Clayton does not. Okay, so we want to get Hodges to this this window. On the ground. Like right in front of that window. Unless, of course, it's already open, which is possible. Oh, maybe we should have kept somebody there to see that. I might actually send him back. We'll see. Okay, we have a visual on him there. I do actually think maybe sending back would be good. Oh, is this... Oh, this one was actually open already. Great. We have visual. So, now that he's blocking that, kind of don't want him to be sitting there. Uh, Pastrami, Roger. move over. Hodges, move over. Clayton... If he's right here, hold on, let's do a scan. I think I could pretty safely go here. But, I just want to be like extra cautious here. We know that these are the only two dudes left. So I'm going to just, let's just be cool a second. Oh, this guy actually heads way out. Okay. And now this guy's out of vision too. Okay. So Hodges will move right in front. Do we get, we have oh shit. So we have the extra movement, but one extra, who knows, could be value. And then I'll start bringing you inside. We'll, we'll interrogate this guy if we need to. Okay, so he's back in this side. We can, we have a lot of cover that we can utilize here. It shouldn't be a problem, but I just want to make it a sure bet. If this guy walks forward and this guy walks forward, then likely they're both in a position we can take them out. That's too bad that box wasn't working. I don't know, like, what the deal is with that.
Maybe you can only get it if you get the intel on it, but that wouldn't make sense. Oh, he's actually going this way. Shit. Okay, I'm gonna go on this top guy. I think it should be fine. We'll go as far away from him as- oh. Oh, there's another box, okay. It scared the hell out of me. Okay. What do we have? Do we have, um... Hmm. We'll do this. And then hopefully we can take him out next turn. Yeah, we got him. That was tight. That was a lot of action. I do want to send somebody to go get that box. It's back there, yeah. Man, this was really cool. That intel was so neat, how they did that. Roger. Uh, I guess we just wait. Before we knock him down. Yeah, see, like, this one we didn't have the option, which makes me feel kind of bad. On the Whew, that was tight. That was tight. And I feel like it, we didn't move too slowly there either. Like, we moved basically as fast as we could, considering. That's... Okay, there's the gold bars. And Julie. Okay, cool. So we got both. Maybe you just have to spot it, and then as long as you survive, you get it? I'm not sure. Hodges. Well done, dude. Well freaking done. Let's just... Anybody is close to maxing out, will max out something. Negotiation, Clayton. Shooting. Uh, let's go strength. Oh, I should have saw it. The Atlas perk, I think that's the picking things up, right? in progress. Wow. And I can even take another call. Gathered in the park and are aggressively yelling at each other. All right. Not a bad day now. Not a bad day now. That's going to be a longer episode. Hopefully you guys don't mind. If you made it here, then uh, the secret password is... White Wolf. The password is... Some teens are standing in a circle. In the center, there's a white girl aggressively rapping in the face of a pumped-up guy in a cap. It looks like he has a gun stuck in the back of his belt. Let's order everyone to calm down. Five, nine, hey, two, nice. Complete. The guy with the gun didn't re resist arrest. In this rap battle, the police had the knockout punch. Cool, we got music. Uh, Pastrami. Let's go stealth. We are, we are getting to a point where we have, like, superstar cops. Adkins can do everything. Hodgkins can do everything. Aranovich is getting up there. Clayton. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. Impressive. Holy shit. Holy. That's... That's great. The cup's gonna overflow. Come on, give me that age, dude. Oh, he's not here. He's not here. Not loyal. Loyal but crappy. Man. I, the thing is... 
I could take somebody that has like max intelligence uh, and be crappy at everything else, even like not loyal, fine, whatever. But these guys are all bad. So I'm just going to keep saving. Hopefully we don't lose a bunch. All right, Hodges, Aranovich, Fletcher, Clayton, Marshall. We'll try and get you off that drunk kick again. Belmont. And do I want to bring out Adkins? She could be... I could send her, like, one really good job, you know? I think I will bring her. Because they fully recover fatigue on a day off. So people at half are, like... It's situational. Even, like, Pastrami here. Oh, but the thing is, but then the next... Yeah, then the next day they gotta be off, for sure. That's the challenge. Um, let, let's give her the day off. What we'll do is um, Pastrami and Flower Pots can do, like, investigations. Uh, Belmont as well. That's how we'll do it. Okay, December 15th. That was a big day. Hope you guys enjoyed that. That was fun. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.